This week, I'm going to show you how I photograph lightning. Sometimes when I go out and photograph lightning, I'll get absolutely nothing. Other times I'll get partial strikes, and then sometimes I'll get really good shots. It all comes down to chance. If your camera is pointing in the right direction and the shutter is open when the lightning strikes, you'll get a photograph. Sometimes storms can last for ages. Other times there'll be a couple of flashes and they'll dissipate. So when a storm happens near you and you want to go out and take photographs of it, you need to act quickly. At the start of the week, we had some fantastic storms here in Dubai. We were relaxing in the evening and then all of a sudden the lightning started to kick off outside. I grabbed my bag quickly and headed out to the Palm. With hindsight, I probably should have headed down towards the Burj Khalifa. Being the tallest building in the world, it probably attracts quite a lot of lightning. But we had to act fast, so I headed out to the Palm because all the lightning was happening out to sea. Anyway, it all happened really quickly and I forgot to get some B-roll. But I thought I'd make this quick video to show you the settings I use when I go out to photograph lightning. First things first, safety. You need to be really careful when taking photographs in a storm. If you're stood in the middle of the field and the storm comes over you, this isn't a good idea. So choose your location wisely. Just take care and use common sense. If you feel like the storm is bearing down on you, get inside a house or inside a car, just somewhere where you're safe. As lightning tends to be really bright when it strikes, there's a lot of light about, so you don't need an amazing camera. You can use an entry-level camera with a kit lens and still get some really good shots. You just need to know how to set your camera up properly for lightning. I always use a tripod and this is essential. And if it gets really windy, you'll need quite a sturdy tripod. This will keep the camera rock steady while you've got your shutter open waiting for the lightning to strike. If the storm is far away, I'll use a telephoto lens. If the storm is really close, I'll use a wide angle lens. I'll then set the focus to infinity. So a manual lens is great for this. If you don't have a manual focus lens, just set the lens to infinity by focusing on a light on the horizon and then set it to manual focus. For my settings, I'll keep the ISO to 100 and then the aperture to about f8. If the lightning is further away, you'll have to open your aperture up by dropping your f number. If the lightning is closer, you might need to close your aperture down to keep the exposure under control by raising the f number up. If the storm is happening at night, I'll tend to keep my shutter speed between 8 and 15 seconds, depending on the ambient light. You just need to dial in your settings for the conditions that you have on the day. In the evening, your shutter speeds will obviously be shorter to get good exposure, but then you'll have more gaps between shots, and then it will increase the chances of missing lightning strikes. For example, if you set your shutter speed to 10 seconds and you had a one second interval, every minute you'd have your shutter closed for about five seconds. On the other hand, if you set your shutter speed to three seconds and had a one second interval, over each minute you'd end up with 15 seconds where the shutter was closed. So you can see that more frames per minute will give you more time where the shutter is actually closed. Depending on how regular the lightning is striking, I'll choose either an intervalometer or a shutter release cable. If it's striking really regularly, a shutter release will work really well. All you'll do is set the shutter to bulb mode and then hold the shutter open until the lightning strikes, then let go of the button as soon as it's struck. If it isn't that regular, I'll use my intervalometer. The great thing with this is you just let your camera take the photographs and then you can watch the lightning happening all around you. Very quickly you can see if lightning is striking in different places and then reframe your shot and then keep that time lapse going. The other night I set it to 10 second exposures with 1 second intervals. I set the number of shots to infinity, put the camera on manual mode and in bulb mode at ISO 100 and f8 and then I just started the sequence. Using an intervalometer works really well, and it'll mean once you've set your camera up, it'll be continuously taking photos. It doesn't even matter if you get distracted, your camera will be automatically taking photographs. I got this shot because I was using an intervalometer. I saw a bolt flash right above us, so I quickly reframed the shot and pointed the camera up about 45 degrees. The only downside to this was getting raindrops on the lens because I was pointing the camera up so much. And this is one of the challenges with shooting lightning. 
you'll find that rain is normally associated with big storms. It'll normally affect wide-angle lenses more because they have bulbous front elements. So make sure you have a lens cloth with you all the time, and when you have an interval, wipe the lens if there's any raindrops on it. I normally look around the front of my lens and check it every now and then if there's any rain in the air. If you're getting soaked, you might have to run for cover. And also, you need to check to see if your camera has weather sealing. If it has, you can take lots of shots and not worry too much, apart from the raindrops on the lens. If it's not weather sealed, you'll have to run for cover. We were hiding under the tailgate of the car, but you can see in this shot, it got into the frame with a 14 mm lens. Then all you need to do is keep tracking to see where the bolts of lightning are coming from. They tend to move through the sky pretty quickly, so you'll need to keep reframing your shot. I've just quickly gone over how to set your camera up to increase your chances of getting a shot of a bolt of lightning. However, if you want a more in-depth tutorial, I highly suggest going over to Picos Hank's channel. I've linked it to the eye in the corner and the link in the description. He's really entertaining, and not only does he have shots of lightning, but he has lots of tornadoes as well, and he has a wealth of knowledge on storms in general. And that's about it. Photographing lightning can be fast and sometimes frustrating, and the storm can be over before you know it. But if you have the right settings in camera from the get-go, you'll really increase your chances. Just make sure you're photographing from a tripod, you use a shutter release cable or an intervalometer, and set the camera to bulb mode. As always, if you like what you see, give me a thumbs up. If you didn't, give me a thumbs down. And for weekly tutorials, hints and tips in photography and videography, subscribe and turn on notifications. I'll see you in the next one.